Hey, it's Kevin DeWitt here. Welcome back to the Mixing in a Home Music Studio course. In this video, we're going to talk about automation. So first, if you're new to my channel and you know my videos and you like what you see, click the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos. So automation, this is something that a lot of people don't get. It can be quite tricky. And look, I'm not gonna disagree with you. It can be tricky and some software is better at it than others. Some it can be quite complicated to work out. Some it can be very easy to work out. Um, so, uh, you know, I will give you some examples and I'll show you a little bit in Cubase, but hopefully you can translate it to your software. But the form of automation is something that I generally do later in the mix once I've got things settled down and um, you know I've got a rough idea of what I want out of this and why I want to even use the automation. Because sometimes it can be hard to adjust automation and get it right later on down the track once you do set it up. But generally things like volume, you can use automation, panning, I mean you can automate anything you like. But the, the general concept of automation is is that you are programming the software to make changes to things in your mix automatically at certain parts in the song that is the generalization of it so for instance an example would be that you've got a guitar part that plays a lead part or a rhythm part but it's doing it under the vocal so it might be off onto the left of the track it might be quite low in volume comes to a middle part, the vocals go away, gonna do a lead solo. You can automate that that guitar track now gets moved to the center, panning, and the volume gets increased. You don't have to worry about it, it's done automatically, the software just does it. That's the general concept of it. Now you can control anything and everything in your software depending on your software and what you've got going. You could change EQ setting, you could change this, you could change that. Me personally, I find that there's other techniques that I can use to do that, that could be duplicating tracks and things like that, that makes it a lot easier and a lot more manageable than using automation. But automation definitely has a place. One common place that I'll use automation is what I call vocal writing. And that is where I will play the vocal track and I will record me moving the fader up and down during that those vocal parts to try and get every word and every part more at an even level. So nothing sort of dips out so you can't hear certain words and nothing peaks out too loudly. Now obviously you can use compressors and stuff to do that as well, but I still like to do a little bit of a, a, a vocal write on that and I'll automate that. So I'll have it automatically writing as I'm doing that and things like that. But there'll be other components as I said where you'll automate panning, and fades or whatever else you know there's lots of ways to do things so let's get into cubase and i'll show you how automation works in a simple form there's really complicated ways to do it as well but i'll show you the way that i would use it mostly in mixes and a couple of techniques and things that you might want to try on your mixes going forward okay so we've got a song here and the first thing we're going to look at is let's just check out the automation settings so we can pull up our automation panel here and you can see there's a plethora of settings and things we can do in here. But basically I leave everything set to touch mode and what touch mode is, is that as you set your automation into write mode, every time you touch a control, it will start to write automation. Okay, there is other settings, but as I said, I'm not going to go into those other settings at this stage. We're just talking about the concepts of automation here. So we may have a track here and let's say it's a piano here. Okay. And so let's show two functions here. Okay. One is we want to draw some automation in. So at the moment, this keys track here has some panning settings it's panned off to the left it has a volume of minus 4.3 so 
Let's say in this section here, we decide that we want this suddenly to be increased in volume. So we can grab a pencil tool here, we can open up, we open up an automation track here and at the moment this automation is set to volume, right? We can change this automation to any other setting here. But having it set to automation, what we can do is we can just put markers in and we can move them wherever we like and we have now created some automation and that's doing it manually so you can draw this to whatever settings you like here and then what you've got is this little button here is right or read automation so if we have that turned off and we play this track the volume will not change Okay, but if we turn the read mode on, now we are activating the automation on this track. So as the song plays, you'll see the volume moving. And if we open the track up in the mix console, you'll see the actual fader moving. I'm not touching that, that is moving on its own based on its reading that automation I drew. So that's a very simple way of doing things automatic and we can draw as much as we like or as little as we want. It doesn't really matter. We can do anything we want with this and change all the settings that we wish to do. And we can also just highlight some of these notes here, or these dots, and we can delete them if we are not happy with what we did. So we can delete all of those if we choose. We can also have some drawn in here, and I could actually select a couple of them in Cubase and we can actually drag up and down. We can then move, I can select them and I could move them around like this. So we've got lots of possibilities of how we want to set these points and how we want to manipulate them. So if we wanted to, for instance, let that was volume, but let's say we wanted to uh, adjust a mute. So that is not muted, but what we could do is in this section here, we could draw a few markers and then we could actually We could actually drag a marker up. Drag the right marker up. So then what happens is that this section here will get muted. So you'll see the mute button came on in this section. And when we get to the end of this, automation here, your mute will turn back off. And there it is, and the track comes back. So we can automate mute, and as I said, we've got all of these different settings here. We can change our pan settings. So we could say, okay, it's currently panned to the left. So we could decide to alter our pan here. And we could say, okay, from here on out, we're going to pan that one there. And that's one side of the pan because this is a stereo track. We can also do the other side. And then as we play that, we should hear the movement.
So we've suddenly got our piano there slowly being panned across. Now we can obviously draw these shapes the way, whatever we want. We could do a sharp turn here, which means that as soon as we hit that point, it is going to quickly jump across to the other side, or we could have it like we did there where we had an angle where it will slowly, gradually over time pan. So if we do it quickly, just bang straight across there. And we've got lots of options with shapes here. We can do bends. We could create curves, sharp turn, you know, anything you want. Whatever you feel that you think you want to do, you can do that with this, especially, well, in Cubase anyway. Your software may be different, but in Cubase you could do that. Okay, so another technique to do here, especially in the manual mode, sometimes, especially, in, so this is a Cubase feature here, is let's say we want to create some automation, but we're struggling to find the setting just in the drop down here, and we just want to quickly find the setting. So, for instance, I'm going to open up this, and let's say I want to activate a high cut or low pass filter, and I want to automate that. But I can't find it very quickly on the menu here. So what we do, just put it in right mode, play a track, make a small adjustment. As soon as we make a small adjustment, you'll see this window jumped open here and it popped out with some automation settings. Okay, now it's opened up the pan module here, but we can get rid of that. So you'll see here, now we have this high frequency setting here. So what we can do is now that we've got it to open up, so that was just a trick to get it to open that up. Now we can actually delete some of these nodes here and we can draw a node in to what we actually wanted to do. And then once we do that, Okay, so we just automated a low pass filter or a high cut filter. And we could quickly bring that back. So obviously you can see there, that's very powerful in that regard. And that's an easy way to get the appropriate automation window to open up in Cubase. Okay, so our other method here, as I said, this is all drawing things in manually. So let's say now what we want to do is we want to do it live. So we've got the song playing and we want to start to make some volume adjustments as we go. So I'm going to pick volume here. I'm going to take all of that away. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it in right mode. And then going to open up my fader on the side here. And what's going to happen is that as I play it, nothing is going to get written here until I touch it because I've got it in touch mode. And every time I unclick my mouse, it will stop writing automation. Now you can do this if you, if you link this to an external uh, hardware device like a uh, Presonus fader port or something like that, then you can actually use a physical fader to do that touch functionality and write this automation in. But I'll show you how to do it with the mouse here, assuming that you don't have a physical controller. So we put whatever tracks we want to have automation automatically written to in write mode. And then when we press play, we're listening to the song. You'll see no automation is being written. And as soon as I click, and I start moving, we start getting automation written. And you'll see there the track has turned red. Now, if I take my finger off the mouse button, it stops writing. So now we're not writing any data. And as soon as I touch it again, we start to write some more.
So that's how you could perform your automation moves live while the song is playing. Now where I would use that technique is usually on a vocal track. So I would play the entire song with the vocals and I would do volume rides of the vocals to make sure that all the words were being heard at appropriate times. Now, as you can see here, this automation here I have done on this keyboard track. Okay, but what if I want to do it on more than the keyboard track. Okay, we've got all the guitars here. We, again, we could do it on any individual track. That is all fine. But what we could also do is we could do it at a bus level. So let's say we have all our buses here and we have all the guitars going through this one bus. So we've got several guitars playing there. Now we can put the bus in right mode and we could do our automation live. So we are now affecting the entire set of guitars, anything that is programmed or set up to route through this bus. Or alternatively, we can write our automation manually. And then we have it in read mode. And when we play it back, we'll get that automation happen exactly as we performed it or exactly as we drew it. And this will happen every time you play this song. And obviously it will happen to your bounce out of your mix. So this automation will be applied to your bounce of the mix, which is going to be your final product. Obviously you want this applied. That's the reason you're doing it. Okay, so that's at a bus level for individual instruments. But again, you can go another level as well and you can apply it to your entire mix. So we could write mode or we could draw in some settings here on our entire mix. So we have many options that we can do with our automation here. And, you know, there's lots of little tricks you can do here. You'll see here, this is a vocal track. Here you can see volume automation. Okay, so if I actually expand that out, you'll see that there's a fair bit of automation going on here. This was, again, performed live with an actual physical fader to get that right. But... You'll also see here, we've got some down below here, which is actually sends to delay tracks. So what I've done in this case is just actually automated a, a delay effect. So the delay in this section here is quite low and not as obvious. And as soon as I he says that one word, I boost that last word there just for the delay effect and the delay jumps up and does that repeat to fill in that little gap there between the phrases. So these are the sort of things you can do with automation and hopefully this has uh, made it pretty clear of how to use it. I said, as I said, there's lots of different settings that you can use in your panel there. We've got touch, auto latch, crossover. There's all various functions. We can do fills to ends, to loops, whatever you want to do. But 
what I've shown here is what you're going to do probably 90% of the time in regards to automation. So there you go, that is automation in QS Pro. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. Do you use automation a lot or do you try to avoid it? Does your software even support it or is it just way too complicated or doesn't support it at all? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on that. If you do have any questions or you didn't understand something or didn't explain something properly, let me know. Um, I'd love to uh, help as much as I can and further explain things if I need to so that you can get the most out of this course. If you did like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to be notified of all my future videos. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.